Hello there. So I heard that cornflakes were originally made to stop people from doing um, hammer curls. And my first thought was, that's kind of a red flag. So I decided to look into the creator of cornflakes, John Harvey Kellogg. We will be going through his early life, his opinion on self-pollination, the creation of cereal, his racist views, as well as the fight with his brother. So there's quite a bit of history, but I'm just going to speed run the cliff notes for you. In 1852, John Preston Kellogg and Anne Jeanette Kellogg gave birth to their son, John Harvey Kellogg, to whom I will from now on refer to as Kellogg, just because I feel like it. His father had been married before to a woman named Marianne, which I find interesting. His family was deeply religious and he had 15 siblings. As a child, he was relatively small and he often had gastrointestinal issues. At first, he was not allowed to go to school because, as I said, his family was deeply religious. And his parents believed that the coming of Jesus Christ would be very soon. So they thought that it would not be very useful to have little Kellogg go off to school. And I kind of understand that until he was 10 years old and then all of a the sudden they changed their mind and they let him go to school. Like, just imagine you're 10 years old, you were never allowed to go to school because your parents believed that Jesus Christ was right around the corner and all of a the sudden they just changed their minds and there you are, welcome to school. As a child he was very much afraid of blood and... He told his mother that he wanted to be anything but a doctor. And guess what? He ended up becoming a doctor anyway. And he specialized in abdominal surgery. From a young age he was a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which was very hard for me to pronounce, and which was a very religious group. This group financially helped Kellogg so he could end up becoming a doctor. The church was also vegetarian, but we'll talk about food later on. Right now, all you need to know is that this church was not a big fan of you um, slapping your hand on the desk, as to say. And they implemented this in ways that were not very ethical. It was said to be both mentally and physically harmful in the way that it was implemented. And throughout his life, Kellogg would believe that all forms of um, pollination were bad, whether that was self-pollination or with your spouse no matter if you were married or not. He should have told this to his dad. I mean, his dad was the one who had 16 children. As said before, Kellogg's was a prestigious doctor. And because of this, he found food to be something that was, of course, very important, which it is. And because of this, he decided to make his five guidelines, which I'll just turn into the three because the last three are pretty much the same. First of all, I totally agree with this. You should never overeat. It's just not very healthy for you or for your stomach. Second of all, he believed that you should only eat twice per day, which I don't fully agree with. It's probably not the best for your glucose levels in your blood. And third of all, you should not eat any stimulating foods or drink any stimulating drinks. And you should always eat non-stimulating foods. Some of the fun things that you're not allowed to consume are first of all tobacco, not food, but still counts. Uh, no spices, no ginger or anything, low sugar, uh, let's see what else, no pickles, no tea, no coffee, no alcohol whatsoever, no condiments, no chocolate, no mustard. But you were supposed to drink milk and eat flour because that was considered to be not stimulating. He thought that these unstimulating foods would inhibit the urges and that that would help you not, you know. At the same time, he believed that coffee would drastically increase the uh, genitals, which has been proven to be correct just 100 years later and in female rats. So on one hand, he kind of has a point, but on the other hand, his views were probably a bit biased. Mainly because his church had already taught him at a young age that things like tobacco, alcohol and especially coffee would increase your urges and thus should be avoided at all costs. But still, this is going to be your indirect link between self-pollination on one hand and cereal on the other. Speaking of cereal, back to cereal. 
Believe it or not, Serial was actually made on accident by Kellogg's and his brother Will. They were trying to boil wheat, but they forgot about it and left it on for way too long. And then they could not roll the dough anymore. They did find, however, that there were tiny flakes in the dough. And they decided to bake these flakes. And thus, Serial was born. One of my sources claimed that baking cereal would promote a process called dextrinization. And this process would cause starch to be transformed into dextrose. And this was supposed to be healthier according to this article, but I disagree as dextrose will give you a quick boost of energy that will not last very long. Whereas starch on the other hand will cause you to have a more constant amount of energy inside your body as you'll not have these huge spikes of sugar in your blood. With the first cereal, it was also said that you could eat as much as you wanted and it would not be very healthy. And I disagree with this. First of all, of course, if you eat anything too much, then it's going to be unhealthy. And second of all, this goes against what Kellogg's believe, that you should just never overeat. Now, it should be noted that also in the 1800s, breakfast was not very healthy. Usually, people would take potatoes and they would bake them in the fat from last night's dinner and I would eat that with something like bacon or some other fat rich meat or they would just eat rice with syrup and basically the food was kind of the wild west it was not very healthy to eat breakfast so cereal was meant to be a new form of healthier breakfast at the time people also drank coffee in the morning of course which as we know the doctor was not a very big fan of and it would make sense that he was very much invested in breakfast as he was an abdominal surgeon. In 1907, he would break from the Seventh-day Adventism Church, which is still hard for me to pronounce for some reason. And he would start focusing more on his racism. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, Kellogg's was a racist. If you were of Asian or African heritage, chances are he did not like you. For example, he was very much against the genetic mixing of different ethnic groups. He was co-founder of a group called the Race Betterment Foundation. And this group focused pretty much on these racist beliefs. This foundation focused on halting something called race degeneracy or something like that. And basically the idea was that mixing different ethnic groups together genetically was not a very good thing and they wanted to improve the genetics of people by stopping this and Kellogg's helped spread these ideas from the east coast of the United States over to the west coast. Yeah that's not very good. Now this was all based on ideas that were not very scientific and I'm not even going to try and debunk it, I'm not going down this rabbit hole but yeah it was basically a lot of pseudoscience. And also this group was very much against promiscuity, which could once again be linked to um, hammer curling. Kellogg was not against total separation of different ethnic groups, however. He had trained 67 people of African-American descent in how to perform surgeries. And in hospitals, he was not a fan of separating people of color from people of not color. I know how to say this. Kellogg also performed surgery on people of African-American descent. One of these was someone called Sojourner Truth. I'm, I'm going to butcher that. And she was an African-American woman who had ulcers. And Kellogg treated her by donating his own skin. He also took care of 40 kids. And a lot of those were of African descent as well. Something interesting though is that Kellogg never had kids of his own. Since he and his wife were both very big fans of avoiding all kinds of pollination, as stated before. But still, he was a doctor, a medical professional, in a time when doctors were not really that accessible and you could not look anything up. And he spent the last 30 years of his life devoting it to not very good stuff, to say the least. And it was not just African-American people it was against, it was also having some issues with people of Asian descent. He said, for example, that Asians would come to rule the world someday. And if his ideas were not implemented, he believed that humanity would go extinct. So that's not very positive. 
so to put this whole long story short, uh, Special K was not Triple K, but he was still not okay. Something else was that he was a big fan of sterilizing mentally challenged people and people who had committed criminal activities. He advised the state to write a bill that would end up with 3,800 people being sterilized. Why does this man keep involving himself with other people's lives? Why? In 1914, there was also this Better Baby contest, which was also not very politically correct to say the least. And in that year, 5,000 babies participated in this Better Baby contest. The next year, this number would lie at 200,000 babies. Wow. Next up, the fight with Will. So Kellogg's and his brother would start a brand to sell cereal. This company would be called the Sanitas Food Company. And at some point, there started to be a bit of friction between Will and Kellogg's. That's because Kellogg's, of course, had very strong ideas regarding food. And Will, he wanted to add more sugar and to add more salt in order to make the food tastier so more people could buy the cereal boxes. And of course, this was a good idea. So Will decided to part from the original company and start a new Kellogg's brand. So Will was the one who was behind the whole Kellogg's brand. So you cannot really say that there is a direct link between the Kellogg's company and advertising against self-pollination. Also, you cannot say that Kellogg's is a racist brand, since it was not made by Kellogg's the man, but by his brother, Will. Anyway, that's it. Um, it's probably a bit of a longer video. I know I've been gone for a while. I may make an update. I may not. Anyway, hope you have fun. Hope you learned something or at least enjoyed yourself. He broke from the seventh day at... at, 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 at.